Genesity is pretty international and I'm very, very happy to welcome a rising star because this is truly a rising star. Hi, Gustavo. Uh, coming all the way from Brazil for, for Chennai City, please. Thank you. Um, yesterday we had uh, uh, the chance to, to welcome uh, uh, LinkedIn as a rising star and also this afternoon for, for, for the uh, world ceremony. And uh, today uh, we have a chance to welcome uh, Gustavo Caetano from SambaTech. So SambaTech today is the number one online video platform in Latin America. It's probably the fastest uh, growing uh, tech company. In, uh, in Latin America and one of the fastest growing company uh, in, in the world. So maybe, uh, uh, Gustavo, could you please introduce quickly yourself and tell us a little bit about the very interesting uh, story of, of Samba Tech. So uh, I'm the founder of uh, Samba Tech. I started Samba in 2004 when I was in the college. And uh, Samba, when, when, uh, I, one day I decided to buy a new mobile device and uh, I bought this device with, with color screen and stuff and uh, I decided, uh, I tried to download some games and there were no games available in the, in the market in Brazil. So I thought that uh, maybe that's an opportunity to, to start a business and uh, I started, uh, I started a, a company to resell mobile games in Latin America. So I went to Europe to find some, research, some uh, games developers over there, and uh, uh, I, found, I found a company in England, and I bring this company to Brazil and start reselling these uh, games in the Brazilian market, and uh, we, we grew very fast. We were like, uh, doing, uh, in one year we had offices in Brazil, Argentina, and Chile, and uh, we're generating some good revenue. And that, that, that's where we, we, we started the company. So absolutely nothing to do with online video, right? Yes. No technology? So. Just a reseller. So, and and was, what, what was the name of, of, a, of a company at the time, Samba oh, at, Tech also? At that time it was Samba Mobile. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> so how did you go from Samba, Tech to Sam, uh, from Samba Mobile to Samba Tech? So uh, we, we were doing very well in the mobile market, reselling games, but we, we thought that uh, there were less uh, barriers of, uh, for, for new entrants in the market. So we decided to, to, like, to, to create our own technology. We were, doing, uh, we were just a reseller and, uh, in a very dangerous position. And uh, we, we, we thought that uh, maybe that's, that was the time to, to create our own technology. And uh, video was something that uh, everybody was talking about in Brazil, but nobody was doing that, online videos. And uh, we created an, a, a platform to manage and host and distribute videos uh, over the three screens, uh, mobile devices, IPTVs, and uh, internet uh, websites. And uh, we first we approached one big uh, one big TV station in Brazil that decided to to hire our, our services, and uh, we thought that that was the the correct path to to grow faster over there. So that that's what, when we created the Samba Tech company to to like do video distribution uh, for for big uh, TV stations in Brazil. We were a B2B company, not a B2C. And uh, all, all, all up, to, up, to, up to that moment, everything had been bootstrapped with no money, right? Yes, no money. And uh, at that time, once you had the platform, I mean, at least a kind of proof of concept, if I understand you well, plus one potential customer for, for, for that uh, Online video platform, nation uh, online video platform. Uh, you started to, to to look for for venture capital at that time. Yeah. So we first we did a prototype of that platform, and we sold for uh, sold the service for one uh, very big TV station in Brazil. And uh, when these uh, company uh, hire our services, we we thought that that was the the good opportunity to pursue. And uh, we start uh, looking for investors to help us to get more scale in, in Brazil and Latin America. So we got uh, $3.7 million from DFJ. And DFJ, again. 
Yes, I you should have said hi to to to, to Team Draper. To team, yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, uh, DFJ has a local branch in Brazil called uh, DFJ Fear Capital. Yeah. And uh, is, it, is it in Rio or Sao Paulo? No, it's in Belo Horizonte. Ah, Belo Horizonte. Okay, in the Rio. same city where Sambatec is from. Okay. Yes, yes. So uh, and at that time we we got like uh, that money, and uh, we we start getting a lot of clients. In one year we got like. 80% of the market, and uh, so today we have like eight out of the ten biggest uh, media groups in Brazil. As eight client. out of ten main media groups in Brazil. Yeah. So that means that basically the, the two remaining, uh, you you don't want to work with them, right? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> you're basically cho you're in a position to choose your customers, right? Yeah. Not 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 really, but <laughs> <laughs> but we are we are working with all the, the big players over there. And uh, also very big international brands like ESPN, uh, HBO, Discovery, and uh, Fox and other uh, big brands in Brazil. I don't know if you feel comfortable to, to disclose uh, how, how much revenues you're generating at that time, at this time? Oh, it's about uh, $10 million. $10 million USD. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow, okay. And, and uh, right now, you, you, what are, what's the plan? I mean, um, international expansion, raising more money, uh, getting more awareness, developing new products? What's so we are negotiating with other uh, VCs to get a second round of investment and uh, to, to do an international expansion. Okay. We want to, we are probably going to open an office in the US uh, in the next semester and, uh, and get other uh, offices in Argentina, Chile, Mexico, and Colombia very soon. We want to get a uh, Latin America market. Uh, we, we want to be the leading company in Latin America market uh, as fast as possible. And, uh, and the next step after that, that, that is uh, China. That's why I'm, I'm here. China. Yes. No, not, not even the US, China, right? Yeah, it's here. What about Europe? So, yes, Europe is a fair competitive market. There are some well-known and very established companies over there. And uh, that, that's why we decided to focus on uh, some emerging markets like Latin America and China and probably India. Okay, you, you, uh, I mean, you have a perfect example of, um, that, um, of basically a, that it doesn't, you don't need to be in Silicon Valley to create a, a world-class company. And uh, uh, you can be uh, very young right after college and, 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 have a, and, and be inspired to create a, a fantastic company. So what, what would be a, your top recommendation to a first-time entrepreneur as, as you were once? Oh, uh, I would say uh, think that the world is flat and uh, that uh, you can be like in emerging markets or anywhere and, to, uh, and create a company with uh, global value. That's what we're uh, trying to do. I agree that uh, we, we don't need to stay in Silicon Valley to create uh, innova innovative companies. And uh, that, that, that's something that I, I would recommend. Is like as, always think as a flat world and, uh, and that you, you can go whatever you want. You don't need to be. The, Brazil is like China is a, is a very big market and uh, almost all the companies in Brazil prefers to stay there, but uh, we see like, uh, that we, we have a lot of uh, growth opportunities outside Brazil, so that, that's why we're pursuing that, and I, I recommend other companies to do the same. Yeah, and, and actually I would recommend also uh, Chinese companies to be more interested in Brazil, which is a fantastic market. Uh, as you know, I mean, I used to live uh, and work in Brazil, and I have a special uh, tenderness for, for this country, uh, which is probably the second, my second uh, home, I would say, uh, after, uh, after France. Okay, um, Gustavo, my pleasure to, to have you here. Thank you so much, and uh, good, luck, good luck in China and good luck in your expansion plans. Thanks a lot.